Hi guys, today we're going to be discussing Metcalfe's Law. This presentation was put together by the, our team, The Stones, consisting of myself, Jessica Munoz, Mark Longoria, and Chris Berkowitz. Referred to as Metcalfe's Network Value Law, it states that the value of networks grows to the square of the number of people it connects. It initially referred to devices in a network, but later became number of users. Metcalfe's Law was first proposed around 1980, and as stated previously, was only used to calculate number of devices on a network. It wasn't until 1993 that George Gilder and Robert Metcalfe decided that the law should measure based on users connected to the network. Robert Metcalf was born in 1946. He graduated from MIT and later went on to Harvard to complete his graduate program. He is known as the co-founder of the Ethernet along with David Boggs, as well as the namesake for Metcalf's Law. He, along with Gilder, helped mold the law into the current user-based law. George Gilder, born in 1939, graduated from Harvard, and he originated the idea. So basically, George Gilder came up with the first idea of Metcalfe's Law, which was not named Metcalfe's Law back then, and Robert Metcalfe built upon that idea to make it a user-based law and that's why it was called Metcalfe's Law. The law itself is just a way to give the network value. Metcalfe believed all the worth of a network is in the number of users, so the value of a network is proportional to the number of users within a network squared. So the formula goes as following f of x is the network's value, n is the number of people connected in any given network. So to help you understand, if you're reading from left to right, network value equals number of connected users multiplied by the number of connected users, not including oneself, divided by 2. The n times n minus 1 is to establish the number of all unique connections without possibility of connecting to yourself. You, div you divide by 2 to eliminate any copies of connections, such as a to b and b to a. Only one of those connections is unique, so you have to eliminate one of those connections, thus the divide by 2. For example, if you are the only person on a network, the value is zero for that network because you're the only person and you're not connecting to anything else or anyone else. But as more people join the network, each person can connect to every other person. So here we've given you a visual example. If you look all the way to the phone on the left, before it is connected to any of the phones, it is by itself. It has a zero value of connection. Once you add one more phone into the mix, the connection is now one because two times one is two over two, which equals one. If you have five phones in a connection, you have 10 connections because five times four is 20 over two, which equals 10. If you then add 12 users, you will have 66 connections. 12 times 11 is 132 over 2 equals 66, and it continues to multiply with every additional user that you add within the network. Metcalfe's Law contradicts Dunbar's number. Dunbar's number is a topic our team covered earlier in the semester. Dunbar's number states that the average person can only have at most 150 people in their network. 
using Metcalf's Law that grows to 11,175 connections. So going back to Dunbar's number, this would mean you could not use the networks to the full value. Of course, it should be noted that every friend in that network need not connect to each other. But this leads to another flaw, which is assigning equal value to all connections. In general, all, in general connections are not used with, same, with the same intensity. In fact, in large networks, such as the internet, with millions of millions of potential connections between individuals, most are not used at all. Metcalf even proposed a new model within the context of social networks using n times log n, proportionality rather than n squared. Twitter and Facebook are the center of this law taking effect. If you look at Facebook, you will see that you usually have more than 150 friends. That is due to friends of friends adding you, thus growing your network. Generally, the intensity is not the same. Some are your best friends, some are old friends from high school, some are acquaintances, and some are people that you don't really even know that well, they just happen to be in your organization, or friends of friends who then add you to just tag you and things. In the business world, if Metcalf's Law was true, then two networks ought to interconnect regardless of relative size. But in actuality, usually only companies of roughly equal sizes are eager to interconnect. And the large network believe the larger network believes that it is helping the smaller network far more than it is being helped. Typically, the larger one demands some additional compensation before interconnecting. And this is more consistent with Metcalf's new new model of n log n. Here are sources, and I encourage anyone listening to this to give us extra points because today is my birthday, and instead of going out and celebrating, I am here recording this lovely video about Metcalf's Law. Thank you.